All right, guys, we're back for part two of this build. We got the torque converter in. I already got it bolted up. Well, mostly. I do have it sitting on here. We had to bolt it upright because of the limitation on space. But, so I had to remove the gas tank, which we got sitting on there. So I'm going to have to make sure I plumb all this fuel lines and all this new gas tank and everything up first. But yeah, that's where we're at. I'm going to get it sitting on there. And I got the rest of the parts here. We got the keyways, the 40, 10 tooth, different things, washers, whatnot. This is sprocket for the rear end. I still got to get it cleaned up. All this welded together. It's an, We're going to go with 18 tooth. See how the gearing is. If you're building a club car, this is a 7 8 right here. Let's see if I can get the focus on you. That's a 7 8 shaft. Not sure how the sprocket's going to work out, so I'm not going to recommend it quite yet. Got the belt. Got a piece of chain. I'm hoping it's the right length. Um, I have to take a master length out of something. But I'm hoping the chain's the right length because that's all I got. If not, we'll go get more. Let me get this motor sitting on there. Let me get this sprocket. Let me get the motor sitting on there first, and then we'll get the sprocket all welded up and get it bolted up on there and see where we're at. All right, guys, so we got the motor sitting on here. It's just kind of just sitting there. All I did was pushed it flat against the back and just kind of angled it to what I believe is pretty square to the rear end. Two shafts seem to be pretty straight. If not, I'll adjust it before I tack weld it. The motor is already bolted to the plate, so my adjustment's going to be on the plate before I actually weld it and that attention to chain. <clears throat> I got the sprocket for the rear right here. I went ahead and put a couple tacks on it all the way around to hold it. This is an old chain that I always use for this. What I do is I just wrap it around so no slag gets on the teeth. And then what I'll do is I'll still clean it up and paint it when I'm done, but it just helps to keep from having to do a lot of cleaning, unnecessary cleaning. But that's where we're at. Let's get this welded up and let's get it put on that rear end. There we go. It's all welded up all the way around. I got to do some cleaning on it, but get a little paint on it. See what it looks like. That's it. This chain, like I said, is garbage. I just use it. That's what it looks like. Let me get this cleaned up, cooled off and painted and we'll go from there. Pretty. All right, guys, we got this thing cleaned up. <clears throat> I painted it up. I don't know if you can see on the back side of it. Cleaned up pretty good. Had to do a little grinding on it, but it's fine. Got it painted flat black. The chain almost fit. I had to cut one link out of it. Um, if you don't know how to cut a chain without a chain breaker, it's easy. You just find, you want this piece right here. You want it to end up looking like this. So what you got to cut off is this piece. Best way to do it is take a grinder, grind this down flush and this piece down flush. Flip it up on its side like this. Take a hammer and a screwdriver, wedge it in there, and just pry it. That'll pop loose. Do the same on that side. That'll pop loose, and this will slide right out. And that's how you break a chain. It's fast. It only takes about a minute. But yeah, I got it all on there. It's not welded down. It's just sitting in place. It seems to be pretty straight from what I can tell. Close enough. I need to slide it a little forward as I tack weld it in. I did have to do some slight modifications to it. See if I can get that pulled out. All right, if you look right down in here, I had to grind these off. This one actually came all the way up to here. This one came up to about here, and this one here, whatever. 
But anyhow, I had to take about an inch and a half off of that one. Reason for it was this chain was hitting. Now, it, I understand it hits here, but once it pulls tight, it doesn't hit no more. It slides right above it, which is what I needed. I may end up taking more off if I think it needs it, but I think we're good. So that's where we're at on that part. I did put a keyway in it, as you can see. A lot of people cut them off. I, I don't. I usually leave a little extra just in case something happens. But I always leave a little extra poking out there. Now I think the plan for this is to eventually take this back off and probably put a pulley here and then somewhere up in here mount an alternator to run a charging system. A little Chevy one wire alternator is pretty simple design. That way he can run lights, radio, whatever else he wants. He's just going to use this basically for around his house. Nothing major, not playing in the mud like I always build. Maybe a little, but you know, nothing serious. We'll see what happens. I got it all hooked up. I'm waiting. My dad's actually bringing me some fuel line. My dad's actually the one that ordered this particular torque converter. He got it off of line at, I believe it's Go Power Sports. It's pretty good deals they got over there. I don't use them a lot, but I may start using them a little more. We'll see. I seem to like. It's just nice to be able to go to one stop, you know, one stop shop and buy anything you need for this type of stuff. I know they're mainly go karts, but you know this is pretty much go kart, a big go kart. That's where we're at on this one. We are going to. I'm gonna wait on my dad to get here to help me pull this motor up tight so I can get it good and tack. And then I actually have to unbolt these four bolts, pull this mo pull this whole plate back out. It just slides out right here. Pull that back out, put it up on my table, weld it on real good, put a good bead around it so it won't break. Then put it all back in place, bolt it down, hook the chain up, plumb some fuel line in. I still got to, while I'm waiting on him, I'm going to work on that kill switch. Run me a kill switch up and I'm going to use the regular ignition. That way he's got all that taken care of and we don't have to worry about that later on. I did hook the throttle up to this cable right here. Excuse me. It works fine. But yeah, this was actually the cable that came with it. It just sits right in that little crack right there and hooks into that little selector. So when you push the gas, it pulls it tight. So I'm going to keep that stock. I kind of like the idea. Like I said, we're going to leave that fuse pin on there for his radio. This little fuse box. That way everything's set up like it should be. So he shouldn't have any problems at all. So let me start working on this kill switch while I'm waiting on him. As soon as he gets here, I'll pick back up where we're at. Alright guys, we're back. It's the next day. We went in and got the motor installed. I welded it right here. As well as on the other side in two spots, kind of put a couple tacks in the middle. I put the cover on, just seems safer. We got this chain hooked up, which is right here. Got the chain hooked up. It's pretty, it's got decent tension to it. Got everything bolted down, tightened up. We had to make a makeshift exhaust, so I used the handlebars off an old four-wheeler I had. And that just comes up, runs it here. And I did leave the flange on. This is a stock muffler because I'm going to make a mounting bracket that comes off of the motor and holds this up. Keep the support. This is good steel though. It ain't going nowhere. <clears throat> Got to pull the carburetor back off and clean it. I tried to crank it yesterday. I don't know what's wrong with it. It just ain't running right. So got to pull that back off. I still got to put the fuel tank on which is right over there and mount me a fuel pump somewhere in here i haven't decided yet i might build me a little bracket or a little plate sits right in here somewhere and that'll be where i put the fuel pump anyways gotta hook the fuel pump up after i clean that carburetor and get the fuel tank sitting in here get it mounted back down get some fuel in it and it should be ready to test drive all right guys so we got the fuel tank sitting on here it was a nightmare putting these this clamp on. I had to kind of rig it. It works. Got the fuel line. This is going to the inlet. And obviously this is going back up 
and into the carburetor. And this one right here is going to the breather right here. So that should create a vacuum and pump gas to that motor. I know it looks like a cluster and I'm going to put a bracket on this to get it up off of that spark plug because that just don't seem safe to me. Probably about like right in there somewhere. Anyways, that's where we're at with that part. I cleaned the carburetor as you've seen. I'm going to put the breather and stuff back on. That way everything's back the way it should be. We're going to get some gas in this thing. We're going to fire it up and I don't really plan on doing a lot of testing, but you know, make a good circle around the yard, do a little quick drive on it, and then that'll end this video. Alright guys, so we got gas, about a gallon's all I had, but we got it primed up. I haven't crunk it yet, as you can tell, everything's nice and cold. So I haven't started it yet, it almost crunked, then I just went ahead and pushed record so the jug can see it fire up. So let's crank it. something to do with the idle. Maybe I don't have the idle screw tightened up. <clears throat> but I'm going to go ahead and put the plastics on it, set that seat on it, fire it back up. Maybe to stay running long enough we can do a little quick circle out here and see what it's going to do. Alright so we got it on and we'll see if it'll move. Okay. Alright so it ain't very fast. Hopefully fast to move. So I wanted to try it reverse. Yeah, it's smoking, but that's the paint on that muffler. Gotta check something first. Something's rattling. Everything looks tight. Like I said, I gotta get that cardboard clean. Yeah, that carburetor is just junk. May have to order a new one. That or I just don't have enough fuel in there to keep it running. I guess let's get some more fuel in it and uh, we'll pick back up on the next video. This is probably gonna run this video out. But it does run, it does move. Still needs a little work as you can tell, but that's fine. That's what we're doing, just figuring it out. Let's go from there, let's get it back together. Oh, let's get it pushed back in this shop. See what happens from there. Start with the gas. I think it's just too low of fuel. And then we'll figure it out. Hopefully that fixes it. Dad, I'm going to have to clean that carburetor off. Or possibly order a new one. It's never good to go for your first test drive and push it back home. So, 
that about ended on this video. I got stuff to do, so I won't be able to work on it the rest of the day. So I'll pick back up tomorrow, and we'll go from there. We'll get it running. We'll get it right. Then we'll get it painted, put back together, and this thing will be ready to ride. Thanks for watching. Y'all stay tuned. Like and subscribe if you like the content. There's a lot more coming. We'll see you next time.